Humanism, object-oriented ontology, and what's other. Homo sapiens has been creating gods for some time now, probably something on the order of 200,000 years. And I suspect that the other varieties of Homo, Rudolphinus, Habilis, Erectus, and on, on and on, they also created worldviews that contained some version of the supernatural or the gods. For example, ritualized burial, often interpreted by anthropologists as a religious practice, appears to have begun sometime around 300,000 years ago, well before Homo sapiens. The primates that we now classify as human most likely did that most religious of things. They told stories about situations that they had experienced. Situations such as the survival of their loved ones into a life after their physical death. Stories that made sense of what appeared to be senseless. They most likely also considered the reality around them, rocks, wind, the trees, non-human animals, as conscious. Everything made sense and had sense. Nowadays, we call this panpsychism. Anyone who has spent much time around children knows that younger children see surrounding objects from a cat to a tree to a box of Wheaties as animated with consciousness and will. Let me quickly point out that though this trait is characteristic of children, it is not a childish trait. In the West, philosophers and scientists have long poo-pooed the idea, but it's uh, not poo. It's kind of simple. It's an if-then proposition. If the trees have will and consciousness, don't they have rights as well? Isn't the earth and the wind just as human as me or you? Therefore, how can we justify killing them? Carl Jung may be leaping for joy uh, in his grave, because nowadays a Western philosophical version of panpsychism has emerged under the name of object-oriented ontology. Triple O, it's called, among the terminally hip. It, it views the non-human objects as being in the same category as humans. In other words, the other isn't other anymore. Yes, exactly the assumption of most humans for most of Human history, it's that very, very old. Remember that old conundrum. If a tree falls in the forest and nobody is around to hear it, does it make a sound? That's been a question among philosophers for well, since about the 1700s. Clearly, part of the challenge is defining uh, nobody and sound. Let's say nobody is a conscious animal with eardrums. But what about snakes, worms, amoebas. Okay, let's say any organism that can sense. Oh yeah, I forgot to define sound. Is sound only what hits an eardrum? Or is sound the waves produced by some event? Don't waves caused by the tree crashing down occur with or without an eardrum to pick them up? Don't those waves wash over rocks? What are we claiming if we claim that rocks don't hear. This question concerning the tree has floated around in Western philosophy as long, well, so long, because Western philosophy has often counted on human perception to define what is real. Object-oriented ontology and a movement called speculative realism is reversing the othering of, well, just about everything. And with the non-human animals dying and the seas rising, it's about time we figure out how to respect them all. Thanks for listening. You can find much more about humanism and what's happening at First Unitarian Society in Minneapolis by visiting our website at firstunitarian.org.